Well, good afternoon, everybody. This is Cesar Rivas, the National Sales Executive for Sound POS, here with Sound Payments, um, starting our session eight of session seven of this year for the workshops, our reseller workshop, which we do every Wednesday, the, the, the second and last Wednesday of every month at 1 p.m. Eastern time. So thank you for joining us. Um, today's session is going to be around um, uploading large quantities of data uh, using, utilizing the template. Um, also gonna go over uh, the, the process for doing a refund and highlighting a couple of things there. And also wanna share you a new feature that should be coming online within the next couple of weeks. So I'll be able to share with you what that's about. Uh, and then of course, <clears throat> if you've uh, been part of this workshop, you know that I'll, I'll take the first 15 minutes covering those topics. And then the last 15 approximately, I'll, I'll go ahead and do a quick uh, sales pitch. So if you've been through that again, uh, you really want to focus just on this first section. Um, all of our workshops, again, are um, on, on our YouTube channel. If you go to Sound Payments, you'll be able to find. We've been doing now, this is our third year doing workshops. Uh, usually, again, we'll talk about features, uh, new features, uh, existing features. I mean, a lot of stuff going on right now with Sound POS. We have also had a couple of workshops that are around uh, um, testimonials. Just to, to uh, when we talk about the new features, I'll, I'll talk about some other things that are coming online as well. Um, you remember, of course, you know, the premise is that we can empower you, the reseller, um, to have all the tools available, um, you know, for your merchant uh, uh, ISOs and, and agents and things like that. Um, and, and remember that we now do offer a, a pretty wide range of onboarding uh, services and, and hardware options. And I'll talk more in depth about that. All right. So today's session was really around, we're going to use a, a beauty supply store, right? Uh, in order to, to look at uploading large uh, quantities of data. All right. So let me go ahead and switch over to that. Uh, looking at the beauty supply store here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and open up my, uh, my demo environment and look for the store. It's beautiful something, but we'll look it up like this. Just go for me, you. Oh, oh. I must have messed up on the name. Store name. B. Uh, air, air, beautiful. That's the one. All right. So, uh, oh. yes. All right. So this store, I've, I've, I've um, actually cleared out the whole catalog, right? So there's nothing there. Um, no information at all. No products uploaded or anything like that. All right. Um, so because we're going to be focusing on uploading large databases, um, they can be a little bit more uh, cumbersome. If you remember, um, you know, as far as uh, um, uploading, there's some steps you have to take. Uh, if you're going to be using categories, you should be using your categories first and then upload the actual products. Uh, if you remember, there are two templates you can utilize for the products uh, to import. Right, You've got the, uh, the simple and then the complex. The simple just includes a product, but the complex includes a product plus the attributes and the attribute combinations. It's a little bit more complex. So I'm going to be doing two product uploads today show you what the simple one is, and then do a more complex one as well. Um, really, the the the, the main um, uh, limit, uh, lim limitation as far as uploading large databases is um, you don't want to do more than 5,000 products at a time if you're doing a simple database, meaning no attribute or, or attribute combinations. For today, we've got a little bit under 5,000, so you can should be able to do it just in a single uh, swoop. Um, now, we do have categories, of course, so we first want to upload the categories. You do have some templates you can utilize here. Uh, I've already exported it, so let's go ahead and choose the file. All right, and that's actually going to be here. Let's go clients, sales, and today's workshop, which is session seven. So this is the beauty supply categories here. Right, we're going to upload that. And sometimes you're going to get an error message. And if you do, you just read the error file. So here, the category is actually uploaded successfully. Not a whole lot of categories, all right? Um, just some. But this is for the products where you do have a whole lot. So we're going to go ahead and import all of the products now, all right, which is right here. Now, this is a pretty big database, so it's probably going to take a little while. Um, let's see here. It's, about, it's almost 5,000 products, so we shouldn't get any, any kickbacks. Um, but again, you want to limit it to 5,000 tops 
you may even want to break it down a little bit just so it doesn't take that that long to upload all right um i'd mention of course that you have the the, the simple template which only uh includes the products for which you normally have to upload just the uh the uh, the categories first and then you've got of course the um and i, and I probably got some error message because i i didn't I didn't have uh, like the same tax rates and so forth. So, so let's take a look at the error file, see what it tells us, right? It's usually pretty insightful and, and you can upload the same file multiple times. That's not a problem, all right? So let me share this file with you here, all right? Well, come on, there we go. Let me zoom out just a little bit here. So it's not that much, the only duplicate error, so nothing else. Um, I thought maybe it would have been like I said, taxes and things like that. But no, looks like there there's there are, are a couple of products that were duplicated uh, for this database. All right, so it tells you what happens, right? Um, so the duplicate item was the one that was not created. Okay, so 1071. You can actually open that file up. You go here. And let me just uh, see here. I've got it here on my end. Uh, you can open that file up. Give me one second. And you can see, actually, uh, go to that those two products and compare and say, hey, are these really the same or are they different? All right, so give me one second while I move this stuff here out of the way. Uh, all right, so let's open up the products. And it was 1070 and 1071, right? Let's take a look at it. Okay, we got 1070 and 1071. Let me zoom out. Not able to read the whole thing. What are we up to? Uh, let's do page down. 1070 and 1070, 600. Oh, shoot. I apologize, it's a big screen here. Let's go back to the beginning. I go a little faster like this. Where am I? And I apologize, it's taking me so long here, but I just want to show you what that looks like when you actually 882. Should be close there. 1070 that's 1020 so 1070 and 1071 let's see if they actually do look the same all right xperm yucky yeah it looks kind of the same name same SKU. so it may have been an error that was created when the file was, was created on here but again the system is going to tell you what's going on you can fix it and reload now everything else should have been loaded on here okay so when i say okay you go ahead and Get out of here and go back in. And there, you should have all your products loaded on here. Okay? So it's pretty straightforward, okay? Loaded 4,200 products and, and only uh, avoided uh, uploading those uh, those three products that, that it mentioned on there. All right? Um, now, like I said before, if you're going to do something that's a little more complex, then you got to follow a more stringent set of uh, of instructions, right? So let me, let me share those with you, okay? Okay. Um, so if they're structured utilizing categories and or modifier groups and or attributes, then you need to input things in a certain order, okay? Just like with the other one, you first upload your categories. But before you upload the products, then you gotta upload the product attributes, the product modifiers, then the modifier groups, and then last, you actually upload the products, okay? So what I mean by the product attributes is, if you actually go to the, uh, the store itself, okay? You got the main attributes here. Right now, I don't have any attributes, but the attributes could be size or color. Okay, um, and then the 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 actual products are going to contain their own attributes separate when you upload them. Like if you have size and color, what size is it? You know, two ounce, four ounce. What color? Black, red, and so forth. And the combinations. But you need to actually have, let's say, the primary attribute already on the system before you can upload those products. Okay. You're going to also have to upload your product modifiers. Remember, these are contained within the same product uh, profile here, right? The modifiers are also contained here. 
And you can pull them separate if you wanted to, just by going to whether it is a modifier or not. Okay. So here you got some modifiers. Well, in this case, you don't have any modifiers. We're going to be adding some of those. Um, in addition to that, then, once you add the modifiers, you actually have to add the modifier groups because these are going to be identified within the Excel file as a, as a modifier group for each product. All right. Let's go ahead and do that then. All right. We're going we're gonna to go back here. We're going to upload the categories that pertain to the second uh, um, product items that I'm, I'm going to be choosing. I'll go to import. It's time to go back up. And we'll choose the other store. So the first thing is I want to go ahead and load these categories. And again, I may even have a tax rate that's not applicable. All right, so all the categories uploaded successfully. So you see it added more categories on here. All right, what's the next thing I got to do? I got to upload the product attributes. Okay, so again, I'll go here to product attributes. There's a template for that. And I'll choose import. File's already there. Okay, product attributes right here. And there should upload. Okay, product attributes. So, so I didn't have any attributes before. Now I've got, you know, size, flavor, things like that. All right. Next step would be to upload the product modifiers. And again, the product modifiers are um, uploaded right here under the products uh, menu. You go to import. You choose the file. And I actually have a product modifiers here. See? So I should be able to bring that. Now, it's probably going to give me an error message, maybe because of tax. Let's see. I know the products will give me a minute because I've got a tobacco tax, which did not exist here. No, actually it has been imported uh, successfully. Now I got to do the modifier group, right? I just uploaded the modifiers, like add caramel, no cherry, things like that. Now I got to actually upload the modifier groups right here. And I look for my modifier groups here. That shouldn't upload, no problem. All right. Here we go. So as you can see, these include the modifiers I, I just uploaded before. And then finally, we got to go and upload the products, right? That's the last item there. So here now, I, this is where I'm going to get the error messages regarding the, the uh, tax rates that don't exist. So I just choose products, open, we'll upload these guys. And I should get an error message regarding tax rates. <clears throat> so you'll see it'll tell me uh, some products either failed or you know are missing information. Should alert me on that. Okay. It's taking a little bit. Maybe the internet connection is a little slow. Or maybe it's detecting those error messages that I mentioned. Uh, see, so some data may have been imported successfully. So let's take a look at the file. See what it says. All right. Let's wait for it to open up. And let me go ahead and share it with you here. Bring it over. And what does it say? So this is invalid tax category. I knew that. Oh, and also the product vendor. So, uh, and printer. So, any of these items that I did not include in the store beforehand, it, it's going to give me the error message. But if you notice, it actually did import them without those items, right? So, it actually did import those products, regardless of whether those items, but it tells you that, hey, you're missing the uh, tax category, you're missing the printer assignment, and so forth. So, you'll be alerted to that. All right. All right, so that's how you would do a, a more complex uh, um, upload if you do have, you know, the, the 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 attributes and the attribute combinations. You have to do it in that order. All right. All right. The second part of uh, of today um, um, new contents is going to be around doing a refund. We're running a little bit late here. Let me log into it so you can I can share. And what I'm going to do is I've got two different terminals that are assigned to the same store. So I want to show you that. Let me go ahead and share the terminal screen. I'm going to first share my A77, which is a handheld unit. Okay, it's right here. Go ahead and do the air viewer. Zoom out a little bit. Okay, let me accept the invite. So if you run a transaction on the same device and then you want to do a refund, it's pretty easy, right? So let me log in. I'm going to go ahead and Log in here, okay. So let's say I run any transaction. Uh, we'll do groceries and I'll do maybe the potato chips and the eggs, right? So that's what I've got here on the on the shopping cart. Let me go ahead and make a payment on that. Let me zoom in a little more so you can see it better. All right, 
So I'm just going to pay you in cash. Okay, say cash, and I'll make a payment. So if I want to run a transaction, uh, uh, run a refund on here, okay, let's say that I'm out of there, I can do it in different in dif different places. First, if I go to the reports and I go to transaction details, I can shoot, I can do the transaction. I just did it right now. I'm in Vegas, it's 10, 15 here. All right. Um, and then I can choose to go ahead and do a refund. When I do a uh, request a refund, the system will ask me if I want to add it back to inventory. And I already created refund reasons. Okay, so I can go ahead and, and choose item is broken or dislike the item. That's one way to run a refund if you ran the transaction on the same device. All right. Another way is if you go to the sales screen, you can actually go to the transactions. Okay. You can actually pull up the, the transaction history here. Search orders. And we'll see that one that I just did at 1015. And same thing now at this point, you can choose refund and it'll give you kind of the same option, whether you want to add it back to inventory, and so forth, right? But if we change terminals, I'm going to go ahead and close this out here. Zoom back out. Now I choose a different terminal. This time I'm going to choose the, a, the E700. Which is assigned to the same store. Okay, let's wait for the invite on that one. And as I said, you just saw me run. I didn't run the refund, though, of course, but you saw me that I ran the transaction on the E7, E A77. This one I don't have to really zoom in. You should be able to see it clearly here. So if I go to the reports and I go to transaction details, I don't have that transaction. All right, this one's set for a different time, but I don't actually have the transaction I just ran. If I want to find that same transaction, I have to go to the sales screen and search orders here. Then I should be able to see that transaction I just did, uh, which is 1.15 Eastern time. This, this again, this machine set up to Eastern time. Now I can run the refund here, and it gives me the same options again. You can see it clearly here. Restore inventory, uh, item broken, dislike item, whatever that is. All right, so I'll say uh, dislike item and I will add it. Well, I won't add it back because it, it's food. So I'll go ahead and just restore, refund. Okay. And you're good to go. All right. So that's how you'd run a refund um, on here. All right. All right. Last thing I wanted to cover before we go on to my, uh, my regular spiel, my sales spiel here is regarding. Um, um, new features all right um these these are already going to be um they should be by the end of the month but i want to share with you this is what's known as a breakdown and packaging feature you notice it and, and, and we're looking at seamless commerce we zoom in a little bit here so you see it better all right we're looking at the seamless commerce screen what would be a, the, the on the back end you're going to see a new tab when you go into a product it's called breakdown packaging and what this is going to be used for you can use it in, in convenience stores or liquor stores where you break down a six pack from six pack to singles, or maybe you get a you get the item by case, you know, twenty four, and you want to break it down into into six packs and singles. All right, you're going to be able to do that here. Okay, when you go to the breakdown here, um, let's see here. So you're going to see in terms of inventory. Okay, right now I've got fourteen singles, right. When I go to breakdown packaging, I'll show you, hey, I've got 14 singles. But what if I receive, uh, let's say, uh, six packs? If I receive, I create a package called six packs and I receive 10 six packs. All right. Now I've got 14 singles, but because I've got 10 six packs, which are 60 units, the total stock quantity is 74 singles. Okay. And what if I want to convert? a six pack into singles i'll say all right let's convert one six pack to singles and now i've got 20 singles i still have 20 74 singles overall but now i only have nine six packs all right so that's how this function is going to work now on the pos itself let's go there okay when you log into a product now you're going to see that extra tab called breakdown packaging and same thing when you go to the pos all right you've got 14 singles right total 14 singles you create a six pack package like here. 
All right. Now you, have, you need to save it in order to proceed. Now you're going to get an error message, but you got, you know, six packs, you got 10 six packs. So now again, you've got a total of 14 singles. Overall, you got 74 singles and six and, and 10 six packs. And, and here you can, again, break down a six pack if you wanted to. All right. How many do you want to break down? I want to break down only, um, say, one six pack. All right. And once you break it down, again, you go back to the main screen and you'll be able to see that you've got a total of 20 single six packs, overall 74. But now you only have nine six packs. All right. So with that finish the uh, the new section what i wanted to mention here as well is that we are going to be launching um other features uh, but more excitingly um if you are at the wsaa show we're going to be um uh, promoting also some other hardware uh, from deja vu and nexco as well so hope to see everybody there all right so if you've already seen this next section thank you for uh um for joining uh for those of you who have not I'm, i'll go ahead and, and go over a little bit of the pos kind of a quick sales pitch all right so first thing is Regarding us, we're not an ISO, we're a processor or a processor. So all we do is develop the software so that you can go out and provide your clients with the, the tools that they need to run their, their business. Um, our POS is a uh, cloud backed up POS. Uh, everything is backed up in the cloud, but it's also stored locally. Uh, and you've got you know various ways of running inventory. You saw today, you can actually upload inventory as well. Um, you can restrict access to different functionalities for the employees as well. Um, or also keep track of their hours worked through a time card feature. It has a customer's personal database as well. It comes with a, the ability to provide customer credit individually, as well as uh, create a, a points-based loyalty program and configure the number of points generated by a purchase versus the number of points required to redeem a purchase. Um, you can have as many sales tax as, as you like. They're all um, assigned at the individual product level, constantly synchronizing with the cloud, and because it's, again, cloud synchronized, we do have a web portal that allows you to access information and configure your store remotely. Um, it's web-based, so it works on uh, any browser, Google, Chrome, Safari, or uh, Microsoft Edge, just to name a few. Um, so any device that supports a browser, such as a tablet, computer, smartphone, will work as well. And then you got a pretty wide range of reports uh, everything on the terminal, you saw one report on the terminal right now, but you also have a set of range or, or set of reports on the back end that are um, actually um, Excel and um, and PDF based. All right. Um, we are certified to work with all major processors. There's no restriction there because it's cloud based. It'll save on the deployment time You can actually send the terminal and then uh, configure it on the back end. It'll download all the information once it's connected to the Internet. Um, Depending on, on the hardware, you know, the, the, the payment app is really developed by the hardware manufacturer still. We, we don't develop that. So PAX has, you know, a broad range of uh, uh, processors uh, with further hardware. Um, so does Deja Vu and Nexco. But always consult with us before, you know, you commit to buying any hardware. Um, because, it, again, it's cloud-based and any updates can also be done without really impacting the, the functionality of the POS. Um some screenshots here on the left hand side, you can see the actual POS screenshots so on the top left is what would be your, your handheld uh, POS, like the A920 or the A77 that I was sharing with you. The bottom one is what you would see on your countertops. So the orientation is a little different. All right. And then here is what you would see on the on the back end, the actual web portal. The one on the top is for a computer. This is what you would actually see on a on a smartphone. All right. Um, all the devices run on Android. They usually have battery uh, built in. The countertop wants just to back up in case the power, the power goes out and you're in the middle of the transaction so you don't lose the transaction. Um, but it doesn't run on battery for a long time. The handheld ones, they do. Some of them have you know more than even 24 hours uh, stand to, uh, standby. And you can connect in different ways. The countertop ones, you can use Ethernet. And then all of them, you can do you know, Wi-Fi, uh, some, also SIM cards and so forth. Um, you know, as far as the applicability, it's very flexible. So it works, you know, in various uh, verticals. The food industry, I'd say it's really good fit for quick serve fast food storefront, like a butcher ice cream parlor. We're attaching a a, a scale pretty soon. So like, you know, ice cream places and yes, frozen yogurt places are really good fit. And then on the retail side, it works pretty much everywhere. You know, garments, grocery stores and, and other retailers, as you can see listed on there. All right. 
Um, we do provide 24-7. It comes with 24-7 merchant support. It's the, it's the number right here in the U.S., also out of Florida. We also provide for you, the reseller, a one-stop shop uh, known as SoundHub. Uh, and then we, we're always constantly updating. We'd love to hear from you as far as new features, functionalities, what you'd like to change. If it makes sense to hear that there's a lot of demand for that, definitely provide it, provide that for you. And then we do offer advanced level support for both the merchant, but also as you. And we have a, an extremely experienced implementation team. All right. So with that, again, thank you for uh, taking the time to, to join me today. Hope it was, uh, it was useful. Um, I don't see any questions available. So um you've got my email address there in case you need to contact me for any questions um and again if you want to review this again or any any prior session please feel free to go to our um our our youtube channel sound payments and you'll be able to find the information there all right so thank you again everybody have a wonderful day